the importance of bringing your child to the dentist. But today, well, let's just say we're talking beyond teeth, which sounds unique for a dentist to be talking about, but we're really addressing growth and development and how important it is. So welcome back to River Thank City you. Live. And we've been talking all morning about this mm -hmm. off camera, and I'm very intrigued because this is something that's very important it's, it's important to me, it's important to the families and the kids. Um, dentistry, especially pediatric dentistry, is evolving to become much more than just teeth. We're not just looking at holes in teeth, doing fillings. That's still important. We want kids to have healthy teeth and, and keep them not having infections and problems and pain. But we can do so much more if we're looking at a greater scope of the whole body. And, and it started with thinking about how do we get straighter teeth without having to do as much braces because we can get to them young. And it sort of evolved into airway is really critical in that. Muscles and posture are important in that. Uh, tongue movement is very important in that. And then that correlates to sleep. Yes. And that is huge because a lot of kids, well, they don't get a lot of sleep. And you start to see really patterns of behavior. You know, maybe they're acting up, they can't pay attention, they're moody, things of that nature. And a lot of times what happens, they'll go into a physician and they might be on some type of ADHD drug or something like that when in fact it could have been sleep originally. I've seen it estimated that maybe half the kids on ADHD medications really just aren't sleeping well. Um, and, and in dentistry and in medicine, adult sleep apnea is becoming a very big topic, rightfully so, but it actually starts in kids and probably maybe even 10% of kids are having sleep disturbed, disturbed sleep problems. And when you talk about muscle and tongue, what's actually happening to the airway itself? If you um, drop your chin back a half inch, uh, in an open posture and sleeping and mouth breathing or snoring, you're collapsing that airway almost completely in a child. Uh, not the same as an adult, but in a child, the, air, the, the throat is different, airway is different. And by just a little bit opening, you're totally collapsing the, the, the airway. And then what's a remedy for this then? Um, by trying to develop the jaw, uh, train the muscles, incorporate nasal breathing as something we do on a regular basis. Uh, one of the things we use, there's appliances, oral appliances, uh, not so much like the ones in adults that just hold the jaw forward, but actually ones that try and encourage the growth to happen. And it's kind of similar to like a mouth guard, correct? Like a mouth guard. That, uh, what I'm using now is called the, the Healthy Start appliance. Um, it sort of looks like a football mouth guard, uh, but it has certain design to it that trains the tongue and trains the jaw to do certain things that encourage in kids to grow. Um, and so because we're working with kids, we have that growth and development potential. Uh, especially in that four, five, and six age range when it's really important to intervene for that for school coming up and a lot of things like that. And that makes sense because you're really being proactive. And one of the things I just thought about, a lot of young kids have pacifiers. And I would imagine that just wreaks havoc on not only your bite, but the tongue. So is there a correlation you with are, that as well? I don't know if there's correlation, but you're certainly training the tongue to stay low. Um, you're training the growth to be different that is not ideal for proper development. So what I always say to parents is use a pacifier as a pacifier device when they missed a nap, when you just are in the car and you can't stop yet to nurse or do something, but don't use it as a babysitter. It's not there to keep them quiet. It's not there to keep them calm so you can do your whatever adult things. Um, it's really just when, they need, when they're just half past that Thing they need and they just need to be calmed and then you take it out and they move on. That's really interesting. Again, I like this whole idea that it's all about growth development and we're looking at airway, your muscle, the tongue, yeah. diet and hygiene. That's something else that you... The diet and hygiene is important believer. for good growth, for good sleep. We're beginning of that. And I mean, if you had good diet, good hygiene, good growth development, you really wouldn't need much of, of my services. <laughs> so think about that. Right, yeah, so you're just being you know, truthful with it. Now obviously the summer is a great time to get all these appointments situated because kids, they usually have less activities, parents might have a little more time, and you are accepting appointments, yes, correct? Yes, of course, and our building is air conditioned, another great reason. To go <laughs> yeah, there you go, there you go. All right, so if you want to learn more, you can go to tooth2tooth.com or simply give them a call at 904 505-2010. And again, that's Myers Pediatric Dentistry and Orthodontics. Thank you so much. This is definitely an eye-opener because I know a lot of parents at home, they're looking at this and like, what can I do to get my kid to sleep better? This might be the solution. So if you see the mouth posture open when they're sleeping, snoring, dark circles under the eyes, or if you have behavior issues that aren't really explained, they're not just bad kids. Sometimes when your brain is tired, it can't filter, it can't process, it can't function like it needs to. So and that by happens getting with adults sleep, as well. Yes, it does. <laughs> well, thanks again. We appreciate it. Stick right, around. More to come right after this.